Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex. Today we're going to be taking a look at 50 horror themed games for the Nintendo Switch that you should be checking out. Some of these scary, some family friendly, others just fun. So basically, we're aiming for something for everyone. So with that, if the video helps you out today, hit subscribe and let's get started. If you are grabbing anything from the eShop then consider using cornershop.gg for discounted eShop credit that is instant delivery via email and you will be receiving 10% off at checkout using code CORNER. 50 games in for you all including some honourable mentions at the end of this one and it's not a ranking but rather alphabetical. Alien Isolation then is hands down not only one of the best horror experiences for all out scares, but it's also one of the best ports on the Nintendo Switch. It is a first person survival experience, and sure look you could have tried to fight but that would not be wise. My suggestion here it is going to be to run, sneak and hide. There's not only Xenomorphs to worry about them, but also some less than friendly locals as well. The story, it's 15 years after the original film, you are Ripley's daughter, she never returned home you want to understand why. Now since then a black box has been recovered from your mother's ship and now you're on the way to a space station it's going to be basically to research this newly uncovered information. Things of course so quickly go from bad to worse, it is aliens after all, the station when you arrive is in disarray and the overall of the game is just an absolute blast from beginning to end. It even packs in all the seven DLCs, most importantly Last Survivor, which is actually a recreation of Ripley's final mission. It just gets so many things right, it absolutely respects the source material and it is well worth a pick up. Amnesia Collection then on this series, it's so important to the horror genre, for me it influenced so many games out there, think Outlast and entries like that. It was also credited with creating the Let's Play world and few games can honestly match the packed in scares. It's also just a great collection this one, three games, that's going to be The Dark Descent, A Machine for Pigs and also Justine. It's another one where the best option is going to be to run for your life, but it packs some really interesting puzzle mechanics as well. If I had to choose a favourite for me it's going to be a machine for pigs but all are worthy of the time, just be warned, Justine is bite sized and more of an expansion than let's say a standalone. The first it's set in the 1839 year as you try to recover your memory in what is a creepy castle, Pigs it is 1899, we are a butcher exploring let's say our infested town. Justine, finally, it's 1836. It's the story of a sadistic woman, though I will say she has a few reasons behind the actions. Bendy and the Ink Machine, then, and this, a first person puzzle exploration experience, but this world. For me, when I played it, it just got under my skin. You're playing as Henry, you're exploring your past by visiting what is an abandoned animator's workshop, one that you know all too well. Bendy is just creepy though, and it's elevated by an extremely unique visual style. It almost gives me kind of think Cuphead vibes. Definitely then doesn't outstay its welcome, and it delivers on a sense of dread and being watched nearly consistently. Carry On It then is a good option for those that want to sleep at night, it is absolutely horror, heavily influenced by the likes of The Thing, but here we play the monster directly, we become the horror, and what follows is an extremely entertaining metroidvania 2D adventure where you are looking for a way out of this laboratory of sorts. What makes it extremely unique though our tentacle covered monster, it grows as it feeds. Now because of that I wasn't sure how controls would feel as you do grow, but it's all surprisingly smooth and watching our monster tear through this world and those working here as well, it is definitely great fun. Your screen will be washed in blood. You'll even then gain abilities such as being able to control those around you to solve puzzles or even a stealth attack. You can find my full review in the pinned comment below. Darkwood then is a hidden gem and it seems recently it's been getting more and more attention and that is absolutely deserved. A top down survival horror experience, I felt like the few points would make the tension weaker but I was so very wrong. I actually found this one had me on the edge of my seat throughout. It's just incredibly rewarding as well in the sense you're constantly feeling like you're pushing this character forwards. No jump scares in this one and that is in fact part of the tagline in the eShop, I do appreciate that. I think jump scares can often cheapen an experience, but here the main overall, I guess, gameplay loop, you're a scavenger by day and then simply trying to survive by night. The whole aim, understand and uncover the secrets behind the locals that inhabit this forest. 
my big suggestion, just prepare to craft your way out of basically this, let's say, location, this scenario. I'd go watch a few reviews first, but you'll definitely find a lot of folks out there who absolutely love it. Dead by Daylight then, a recommendation with a warning. It's definitely got better since launch and I do love this game, but it is only suggested if this is the only system you own. Otherwise, I will say buy it elsewhere. I play on the PlayStation myself. I have done now for years. It's an asymmetrical online experience for survivors at one killer. The idea is simple. As a survivor, try to escape a map by starting up generators. As the killer, it's pretty easy to guess your job, but basically throw these survivors on hooks. It's playable, just not the best example of the game, but it gets a ton of support from the creators with new characters and maps added consistently. Think the now removed Stranger Things, for example, or the Resident Evil spin-off. Not a particularly scary game either once you get used to killers charging at you, but you'll have an absolute blast and the community is one of the best out there. Doctor Who, the lonely assassins and creepy stuff. If you've seen the episode Blink, you'll know how creepy these stone angels can be. Basically, they move if you do take your eyes off of them. Given the Doctor Who theme, it is definitely suitable for most ages, and it is a found phone mystery game by an award-winning team. Essentially, though, it's picking up immediately after the episode, and you ought to be finding someone's phone they are missing, and it's now on a path to self-destruction. Can you save the day by solving puzzles along the way? That's really what it's all about, you know, exploring someone's phone, looking for clues, and it is weirdly satisfying. For me, though, it's the best Doctor Who game I've ever played, and not that we have a ton of options. And my final note on this one, it's not particularly all out scary, rather it's just when you know these characters, it's more the fear of, you know, knowing what they are capable of over actually seeing anything play out. And that's where it's more than most, you know, suitable for all ages. Doki Doki Literature Club then is unique. It appears to be a simplistic dating simulator, but quickly evolves into what is this psychological horror. It comes with multiple warnings just due to the themes involved, but also the artwork, it's definitely deceiving. But just think here, nothing meets the eye and it's definitely an adult experience. I don't want to give anything away here, but the gameplay won't be for everyone. A visual and novel with a poem building element, and yes, you heard that right. Watch a full review on this one. I enjoyed it personally, but it's for sure a love it or hate it experience. I don't think I've met anyone that really falls in the middle. This one, though, it definitely gets under the skin. It's not scary in you know the traditional sense, but it definitely tackles some challenging themes. Dying Light then was incredibly well done. It's a game that's been around now for some time, originally released in 2015 in Techland. They just kept up the support and that resulted in not only think gameplay tweaks and fixes, but a huge amount of DLC, which were essentially campaigns in themselves. This year also saw the release of the sequel and that said, the Switch build, it was delayed unfortunately, and it is also intended to be cloud only. A first-person survival adventure, it mixes together first-person gunplay, a huge open world to explore and parkour to outmaneuver the huge amount of enemy factions and zombies. This is particularly true at nighttime when things get particularly dangerous. I covered it on the channel, find that in the pinned comment, but since launch, they have even stabilized the frame rate as well. Release-wise then, it is the definitive edition. It's packing in not only the base game where you're essentially throwing over, let's say a dictator of sorts, but also four DLCs and 22 bundles. That's going to be everything from skins to new story content, new modes, new zones, and new weapons. Quality game though, well worth the time. Though it's kind of weird it's not available in all regions, it seems to be down to an old ban from years ago. Definitely intense, but not necessarily scary. It's kind of zombie fair though, but let's just say a whole lot faster than the typical genre entries. Fatal Frame and Made in the Blackwater then was another re-release, this time from the Wii U generation in 2014, but it dropped to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Fatal Frame as a series. This one, the story, it revolves around Mount Akami, once a spiritual place, now a place of, let's say, curious happenings and, well, basically all-out terror. The gameplay, it revolves so around the camera, and that's what I really like, honestly. It's somewhat the usual, you know, no weapon style of gameplay, but here we at least get a camera that can banish these ghosts that do appear around us, and we'll be taking on the role of multiple characters, covering multiple more than unusual circumstances. Along the way, 
upgrading, you'll get upgrades, and it's just often creepy stuff. I find my review below, but definitely has its moments of creepy, and definitely a good one for those that like a morphing, almost 90s style of horror. Five Nights at Freddy's then needs little in the way of introduction. It's become a bit of a pop culture hit over the years, and on the Switch we have a total of six entries. They all have their own spin on the formula, which is overall a monitor the security room, stop these animatronic menaces from reaching you by simply keeping the camera on them. Unfortunately though, you do have limited power to achieve this. Each entry, I'll give it this, evolves the idea of the gameplay in some way with some minor new mechanics, but outside of the original four and sister location, the big one for change is Help Wanted. This was originally a VR title. You can definitely feel all of that as it diversifies the gameplay style with almost think mini games. Reviewed the first entry as well as Help Wanted here on the channel. They're linked below in the pinned comments. I definitely though start with the original and work from there. It provides a nice learning curve if you don't get fed up at that formula. Also, I wouldn't call them particularly scary games either once you get used to their over-reliance on, you know, jump scares. Ghostbusters the video game a remastered then is just good fun in no way scary but a brand new story from the original creators as he blasts away ghosts and it comes highly recommended. I loved this game back in the day and I was psyched to see it get some new attention. It's just a well done spin on a movie formula which is such a rare thing to see. The fact then they went ahead and got the original face cast as well, it just elevates it further, and using a proton packet is as much fun as it sounds, even with some nods to the movies with locations, and then some original ones as well. I loved it back in the day, still do now, it's a blast from beginning to end. Limbo and Inside then I'm putting together, while I'm not connected as such, they both come from Play Dead, both are considered masterpieces of the puzzle platforming world. These are games I don't want to give too much away for, so I'll keep it simple and follow the eShop description. Limbo, uncertain of his sister's fate, a boy enters Limbo. Inside, a boy finds himself drawn to the center of a dark project. Definitely not scary games, but expect here a constant you know, sense of dread, I guess, and consistent deaths as well. Few games can beat the atmosphere with these, in my opinion, and they've won countless awards with good reason. Layers of Fear then has two entries on the system, that's the original Legacy Edition as well as the follow-up simply titled Legacy of Fear 2. These are going to be for the walking sim fans out there, I'd describe them as experiences that take you into the idea of losing your mind. The first, it's exploring a madness engulfed painter out to paint his masterpiece. The second, it's getting kind of like a golden age of Hollywood spin. Think in the second though you're exploring a ship but not as all as it seems. I think I prefer the first one personally, this mansion, but both are definitely worth the time. I reviewed the second here on the channel, so do find that in the pinned comments. They are fantastic ports as well. The second looks particularly nice on the hardware. And scare-wise, some are jump scares, but more psychological. And I found them nerve-wracking with a slow burn throughout. Another bundle for you all then, Little Nightmares 1 and 2, another game of the puzzle of platforming variety. This one definitely knows how to build a creepy world with characters that are larger than life, and they are essentially the corrupted. In the original, you help Six and the kid escape what is a mysterious vessel. The second, a similar idea, we play as Mano, a young boy trapped in a world that is distorted by a signal from a distant tower. You are now out to investigate. I prefer the second game personally, I think they were able to deliver on the mechanics gameplay wise just a little bit more. And yeah, it's a fun if creepy raid. Again though, it's a good option if you don't want all out scary. My review of the second is below, but you can pick them up together or individually. Luigi's Mansion 3 then by far the most family friendly experience for the horror season and sure look, there's other options that fall into this range, but I think from a gameplay perspective, this is the best in the sense that it's easy to pick up and play, it has two player local support as well, and even an eight player mode as well, both local or online. The story, we're basically invited to the last resort hotel, and now we need to save our missing friends. Defeat goes so clear a number of objectives and simply explore this stunning location. Nintendo really know how to get the most out of the hardware and few games for me are quite as crisp as this one. It's just fun though vacuuming up ghosts with a pull to gust and you'll even find some mini games packed in here as well. I picked it up at launch, I've played it on and off over the years and I've never once regretted that purchase. 
Observer then is a personal favourite, a sci-fi cyberpunk detective thriller. The year is 2084. We find ourselves in Poland. This world is in ruins, it's overrun, and as you would expect, that is by massive corporations. Your role as an observer, hack, interrogate, and even dive into the minds of those around you. Arriving at a small apartment block though to open the game, it turns out your son has disappeared and now you need to get to the bottom of the mystery. First person in design, it's not one with jump scares, but I do enjoy its examination of what is a downrun world. And seeing into the minds of witnesses, or even those that are recently deceased, incredibly creepy. On the Switch as well, I was really impressed with the port work. It looks really good, runs really well. It's got a great cast finally then to really elevate the experience. Outlast then has two releases on the Nintendo Switch, that's the Bundle of Terror and Outlast 2 and these for me, heavily influenced by the likes of Amnesia, but honestly really worthy successors. These like that are some of the scariest games on the system, first person, this is a run and hide game over a combat experience and while you could attack them as walking simulators, I would say a little bit faster than that and they definitely keep the heart rate up. The first though, we are in the remote mountains of Colorado. We decide to investigate an abandoned home for the mentally ill. Things, naturally, they go wrong. It also then packs the whistle of Blower DLC, which expands upon the story. And essentially, it's the character that led us to this location. The second, we're in Arizona. We're investigating a cult. I thought the first was scarier. It's more claustrophobic. But the second, it was an entertaining extension. You can find my review for the second game in the comments down below, but do be warned. Definitely not for the faint of heart this one, fantastic porto and all out horror fans that want scares, these are more than worthy of your attention. Pumpkin Jack then lightens the mood. This one is just fun. It's an N64 inspired 3D platformer. It puts you in the role of title. A Jack asks you to help evil annihilate good. It's simple stuff as you can imagine. A whole lot of locations to explore. A fun combat system with multiple weapons. There's even some puzzles where you can remove your head to explore these smaller locations. Problems wise, the only thing I didn't enjoy, a few on rail sections. They feel a little too trial and error for my liking but overall good stuff and I'm a big fan of this one. You can check out my full review in the pinned comment down below, but overall in my opinion, for platforming, 3D platforming genre fans, it gets a lot right. Resident Evil then has a huge presence on the Nintendo Switch. We'll even get footage soon, but disappointingly, that will be a cloud release. At time of recording though, there is at least a demo available on the eShop. In total although, we have to my count seven games, as well as the fantastic already mentioned Dead by Daylight character pack as well. Expect here though to find everything from rebuilds to Dreamcast classics. My favourite out of all of them, I'm going obvious, Resident Evil 4, but I'd never describe them as particularly scary. What is unique though, start at the first and you'll see the slow burn horror it sets out to achieve, and then by 6, it's almost a parody of itself and an all out action game. While well, loved though, for good reason, and if third person is your thing, these are some of the kings of the genre. Shadow Man Remastered then is another third person experience, it's for sure got an air of horror to its voodoo styled world. As a character we are chasing criminals in the spirit world and real world, and it has some truly out there and disgusting environments. It's not scary, but it does have its moments of gore, especially in the killers you're chasing, and the exploration, old school, it's challenging, it gives you little in the way of direction, but it's definitely good fun and it is definitely rewarding. Think though everything here from a voodoo powers to simple weaponry and while it definitely shows its age, I grew up on it and I would say I enjoyed that throwback. Again, not a scary one, but it feels relevant for a horror filled list. My full review, it's in the pinned comment down below. A simulacra then is what I would consider a hidden gem and like Doctor Who earlier in the video, this one's the same team. It's based around the idea of a lost phone, but it's incredibly like scary this scenario, especially as you peer into someone else's life. There's something kind of fireistic about it. This one as well, although as a warning, definitely more adult than the Doctor Who spin. The whole concept though, you find this phone, it belongs to Anne, someone that you don't know, but inside the phone is a cry for help in video form. Now you need to explore text messages, emails, photos, even communicate with those that she knows, and it has five endings to uncover. This one absolutely got under my skin, had me on the edge of my seat, it even packs a few jump scares as well. The Coma and the Coma 2 then games with mixed opinions, especially the first one, but I actually personally 
really enjoyed them and frequently speak highly of them here on the channel. The idea though, 2D exploration horror games, and yeah, the first we fall asleep in class to awake at night only to find the school is now packing a teacher that is demon-like out to kill you. You'll be navigating these different corridors and floors of this location. The second it expands the cast with a new lead, but now we can actually leave the school at location and not only meet creatures that want to hurt us, but those that are simply going about their day to day. It's almost like got this fantasy spin to it. It's a whole lot of running and hiding though in the 2D viewpoint. It means there's some backtracking, but overall I was really impressed. I especially liked that visual style. I'd call it a tense game as well. It kind of, it's one of those games that plays a tone when there's someone after you. And honestly, that never got old from beginning to end. The Persistence then is another favourite of mine, a sci-fi first person experience. It was made for VR initially. That is somewhat obvious in the movement, honestly, especially when you're using a cursor to climb over certain objects. But do not let that distract you. This one it is intense. The idea you'll be exploring this ship trying to avoid disaster by saving it from hurtling into a black hole. So basically, you need to power back up all of the container systems. The gameplay though, explore, sneak and find all sorts of weaponry. Where it gets really unique though, it is a roguelike assault. So basically, every time you die, you actually teleport back to the beginning because it turns out you are a clone. The one thing that makes it a little easier, it does pack checkpoints and new places to spawn into the game. Great time though, I hope it gets a sequel and you'll find my review in the pinned comment below. Tormented Souls then is a very fun game. It released on the Switch in a bad state, honestly, but basically a love letter to the OG Resident Evil entries from its cheesy face acting and narrative to its visual style and design. The story, you basically receive a postcard from some sort of, let's say, home, a mansion, a couple of kids on the front. Now that is stuck in your memory and stupidly you decide to go and investigate. While you arrive, things go from bad to worse. You wake up in a bathtub, you are naked, you are missing an eye. Yet somehow you still decide to stand up and go deeper into this mansion and explore. It's not a scary one again, but it definitely has its moments. And I was actually having a ton of fun with it until I hit a hard crash, which screwed my progress. Thankfully, that's since been fixed with a patch and I do intend to return back to this Switch build soon. I did, however, get to finish it over on a PS5. White Day, a labyrinth named School of Them was a recent review here for the channel. I was really impressed with this one. I've wanted to play it for some time now, thanks to what is the cover art. I just thought it looked really cool. Never got around to it though, so I was excited to see this port release and it did not disappoint. It is another walking sim of sorts for the most part, first person, but it definitely packs a few action sequences as well and some seriously creative puzzles. Basically though, the horror in this one, there's the occasional demon almost, as well as caretakers that are out to get you. The story, the narrative as well, it's pretty light stuff initially. You're trying to deliver a Valentine's present to a girl at school. You're heading there at night to leave it in their locker. Before you know it, you are locked in and now it packs a ton of secrets. It definitely gets a little repetitive with its scares, losing its edge, I think the caretakers you know, they're not all of that scary once you get used to them. They also overplay a few of the ghost scares, but I still had a lot of fun and my full video is down below. World War Z then is a fantastic option for action fans based on the movie and the novel of the same name. It's throwing you into the shoes of a number of characters across the globe and you'll be out to tackle swarms of zombies. This one, it's just all our action and it can be intense because these zombies, these sprints, they climb and you'll be charged with mowing them down. It's particularly fun then in multiplayer as well online. I do wish it packed to the expansion content that we saw on other platforms, but it's a great one that's gonna be for the big zombie fans out there. It even had a patch that fixed up a few wobbles in the frame rate department and it still impresses me when the screen gets swarmed with these zombie waves and they're using each other to create these towers. Check out my full review in the pinned comment below. Zombie Army then, before we do get to the honorable mentions, I quickly want to shout out, but this, we've got two releases, the trilogy that released first, and then most recently, Zombie Army 4 Dead War. Now, like World War C, these are third person, but these ones, they are a spin on the Sniper Elite formula. So basically, it can be all out guns blazing as you do charge in, or you can play stealth and take these zombies down at a distance. 
This team, though, incredible report work. They look absolutely fantastic. They do not get enough credit for that. The gunplay, though, is solid. And yeah, that's especially true when it comes to an X-ray camera that highlights particularly brutal shots. My favorite level has to be in the fourth game. You find yourself at the Zombie Sioux. But yeah, both highly recommended games from me. And you can find my video on the fourth entry in the comments down below. A few quick honourable mentions and to close us out today, first Deadly Premonition, this one is a cult classic at this point. Third person takes heavy influence from the world of Twin Peaks, but it's somewhat a game celebrated now for how almost broken and strange it is. I found the fun in it, but just be warned it will not be for everyone. I thought the sequel was okay too, but it couldn't quite, you know, reach this one. Then Happy's Humble Burger Farm, it's almost a spin on Five Nights, but think here, cooking like overcooked in this McDonald's like restaurant. I thought this game was fantastic, I played it on the Xbox originally, it's just more than meets the eye. But on the Switch, the visual performance, it did let it down. I'll link my video below though, take a look, see if you're willing to put up with that kind of, you know, I guess filter they've put in place. Really fun though and definitely intense when Happy turns up to chase you because you cook a meal or get enough things wrong. The House of the Dead then, I just didn't enjoy the gameplay honestly, the action is fun and the port is good, but we just don't have the hardware in place to maximise the idea of playing with something akin to a light gun. For me, it just constantly went out of sync so I had to play with a cursor, and yeah that just for me ruined the magic of what is now a classic game. Made of Scare then is a good one from Wales Interactive, I'm only putting it here because it's competing with the likes of Amnesia and Outlast in that walking sim like world. Where they did get unique, they did throw in this shooter mode with a recent update that I still need to check out. The world was fun though and it's definitely creepy, blind enemies basically that have you sneaking, but what let it down was honestly just these repetitive enemy designs. Finally, this is a bit of a bundle, I guess I'm kind of encompassing a few games here, but the first person shooters of the world, think of the likes of Doom, Quake, Bioshock even, and the recent Dusk, all you could argue horror easily in the theme, like some I featured today in the list, but I don't know, for me they just felt more closely linked to the shooter world, so they will absolutely show up in another video I've got coming here on the channel very soon. And that is the video down, 50 horror games that you should be stocking up on, whether it's for the Halloween season or simply you need a healthy dose of scares and imagery in your life. Let me know if there's anything I did miss in the comments below and let me know any of your personal favourites. With that though, like, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.